In this video, we're going to cover Ping Federate SAML configuration with ClickSense. Uh, this video is taken with a customer through WebEx, so there's going to be some blurry cam as well as some uh, some focused on some images so that we can uh, get a safe demo for you. So to start off, we're going to add a description. We'll call it Ping Demo and a prefix. Uh, we'll leave it the same as Ping Demo. And then for the session cookie header name, we'll just add ping demo to the end. We'll go to the authentication section. And in the authentication section, we're going to flip the method from ticket to SAML. And now we're going to start to fill out the information related to the SAML host URI and the entity ID. So the host URI is typically uh, the URL to the ClickSense server, and then the enti entity ID is a unique value that will be provided to the IDP. We'll add the IDP metadata as well as a user ID and a user directory for our SAML connection. And then we're going to add some SAML mappings, uh, some attribute mappings, one for a user ID as well as an email. And then we're going to uncheck them uh, as mandatory because they're not mandatory attributes for uh, use. After that, we'll scroll down and we'll click on the load balancing and we'll add the central node because in this environment we're just doing a single node. And then we'll go to the advanced and in the WebSocket origin whitelist we want to add the name of the, we'll add the host name for the server. We'll apply our changes and then what we'll do is we'll click on the proxies under associated items and link the virtual proxy to the central node. We'll go ahead and restart the QMC. And now we can go ahead and download our SP metadata. So we'll download the SP metadata because we'll be bringing that into ping. So now that we're in ping, we're going to go ahead and create new SP configuration inside of uh, Ping Federate. So we'll click on New, and we want to use Browser SSO Profiles with SAML 2.0. And then we're going to go ahead and click Next, and make sure that Browser SSO is checked. And then we'll browse for our metadata. And then once we've loaded our SP metadata, we'll notice that the metadata is unsigned. But our entity ID, as well as the base URL for our SP connection, is listed inside of the configuration. We'll now go ahead and we'll configure the browser SSO. And in order to do that, we're going to make sure that we check SP initiated SSO because that's all that ClickSense supports. And then we'll go to the assertion creation and we'll configure the assertion creation. And this is a really important part of the configuration. Because by default, Pink Federate has, uh, chooses standard, and ClickSense supports transient. And for Pink Federate, we need to make sure we check transient, and we also want to include attributes in addition to the transient identifier. Because this is where we're going to set the actual user ID value that we're going to send over to ClickSense. So now we'll go into the attribute contract and we'll extend the contract. We're going to set the attribute name format to unspecified. And once we set that to unspecified, we'll go ahead and add the attribute name that we want to include. In this case, we're going to add uh, a value called the MUID, which is just a user ID. And then we're also going to add email as another attribute. Once we've added those two attributes, we can go ahead and continue with the configuration and we'll choose map new app to adapter instance. And in the adapter instance, we'll choose the IDP that we're using, in this case, SiteBinder. And that will show the adapter contracts that come over. We'll notice that the MUID is included in that. Your value may vary based on your deployment. So don't look for MUID, look for whatever is going to be the value you want to send that has the user ID. In the assertion mapping, we're only going to send the adapter contract values in the assertion, and we're going to select the source, and of course the source is the adapter for both of these values. 
And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and map them to what value they represent from that source repository. And then we'll go to our summary and we'll set up and take a look at our assertion creation. Now what we'll do is we'll go into our protocol settings and for our protocol settings you can see from the SP metadata we've pulled in post and redirect. But we need to go into the pingfederate configuration and we need to make sure that we set the appropriate artifact resolvers. So we want to make sure that we uncheck artifact and soap and leave post and redirect checked only. Once we do that, we can click on the signature policy and we always want to sign the SAML assertion. Uh, it's not necessary, but ClickSense seems to like it more when it is assigned assertion. We're not going to encrypt anything, so we can just go ahead and click next through this setting and then we'll land on the summary for the protocol setting. Once we're done there, we'll save that. We can review the configuration. And the last piece we need to add is the signing certificate for the assertion. So we'll go ahead and go in that. And we'll add our di digital signature by clicking on the configure credentials. We'll choose the appropriate signing certificate. We want to make sure that if we're using ClickSense 2.1 or lower than ClickSense 2.0.5, that we set the RSA SHA to 1. Uh, ClickSense 2.0.5 and below, as well as ClickSense 2.1.1 do not support SHA-256. Once we're done there, we'll go ahead and we'll review the configuration one more time. After that, we can go ahead and click active and then replicate after we save and we'll have a properly configured ping federate configuration for ClickSense SAML.